Hello and welcome back to Ducoscopy TV and the second series of Glitter, Glamour and Investment, a very special collaboration between Ducoscopy TV and LK Bear. Now previously we looked at diamonds as a valuable accessory and also an investment option, but today LK and myself will be delving into the secret world of precious stones. LK, welcome back into the studio. So we're going to be looking at precious stones. Now diamonds are forever. Diamonds are a girl's best friends, but you and I have both discussed that precious stones, we love the, the colour, the beauty, the depth. You've went to the mines, you've been there and picked them out yourself, found them yourself. So tell us a little bit about your passion for this side of things, please. Um, why I like precious stones is because I love colour. And I think uh, also it's very special to go directly to the mines. To go there, it's quite adventurous. Sitting there, for example, this was in the Mogok. It's a very secret region. Very few people in the world had access until now. And so you go there, you can really see how they are mined. You take the rough out. And here I brought you some of the roughs you can find. And then also see how they cut and then finally have the, the result of the stones um, once cut. So it's completely different to have uh, these two options. So we have the pure form and as you find from the mines and then what the end result here. Exactly, exactly. So you know that the whole story, the whole... Exactly. Now one thing when you discuss, discuss sorry, precious stones, a word which becomes entirely prevalent is the corundum. What is the corundum? Can you tell us more about this, please? Yes, sir. So the uh, corundum is, in, f in fact, aluminium oxide. So this is the material that is made of. And then, for example, with chromium, you get ruby. And with other colors, you get the sapphire part. So it's the same material. Here you can see one sapphire, one ruby. So it's the same material. It's just uh, the color is changed by the minerals who, who, who gave the color. So what is also very interesting that it's really the hardest material of the diamonds. So diamonds we saw it's 10, so corundum is 9. So it's the second hardest material in the world and we have the, all the colours. The stones, I always wished that they were my birthstone. In fact they aren't, I think they're my sisters. But if we look at rubies a little bit more closely please, um, tell us a little bit where they're formed and different aspects about the ruby. Uh, so the first rubies were found in Sri Lanka and uh, very often they were called the typical Indian rubies. This is like the necklace you are wearing. They are rather pink. Very often they are not so transparent. And this already in the old time, it's also the cutting is very typical. It's a bit of old cutting. Let's say they just uh, um, polished it, so not really cut it, faceted. So this was the first mines in Sri Lanka. Later on they discovered the famous Mogok mine in Myanmar and Burma, where you saw some photos before and so there the very best rubies are coming from the really the well-known pigeon blood rubies like you also have yeah. behind. Brilliant red. Isn't exactly it? it's a very bright and brilliant red and uh, also nowadays you find uh, very new mines in Africa so for example the ruby you're wearing this is a typical very often they go a bit in brownish and, and um, purple colors so this is from the mines in um, Kenya, for example, and Mozambique. And also now rubies are coming from Tajikistan and also Mozambique in a very beautiful bright color. Really, they can be the same, the same quality like in Burma, but uh, value-wise there is a big difference. Uh -huh, very interesting. Yeah, so also for example here, I have a Thai ruby. Thailand is also mine in Chantaburi. Now it's close, but it's, uh, it's Thailand. Also ruby because they are really, uh, all, everything what is more than three carat is extremely rare. So this is very rare in the size already. This is a 12 carat ruby. From the different mines that you're talking about, some rubies there. The other one that you mentioned is sapphire, deeply beautiful. We can see, is this a sapphire on your, on your hands yes. and in your ears, which are beautiful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, as you mentioned, people are familiar with the blue sapphire. That, that is certainly when, what comes to mind when you talk about sapphires, but there's so many other colours. So can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, these different, the family members of the sapphire, please? Yes, uh, so sapphires, as I said, can come in all colors. They can really come uh, 
in purplish, in green, in brownish, in yellow, and there is one uh, very specific color which is also called patparacha. This is also very expensive because it's extremely rare, and it's an orangey, um, pinkish color, and this is called patparacha. But normally, if you talk about sapphire, you really mean the blue one, mm -hmm. and also there are different mines. So the same thing. Sri Lanka, for example, typically Sri Lanka is this color. Uh, it's a bit lighter, mm -hmm. but uh, there is also, before Sri Lanka and Madagascar were one uh, island. Mm -hmm. So S Madagascar and Sri Lanka stones, in fact, you have more or less the same color and the same inclusions. Uh, then there come the darker ones, which is Thailand or Cambodia, can also be Australia. Deep, deep blue. Right? Deep, deep blue. And here abroad too, you really can see the difference. This is Sri Lanka, and this is a darker blue from Australia, I think. Mm -hmm. And this is the famous, there are small ones, which we also we bought near the mines. This is royal blue color. Mm -hmm. And they come, this is cabochon, like this one. This also is a cabochon. This is 30 carat. Wow. Burma, royal blue. Very beautiful. It's really a, a really distinct dark color there. Yeah, exactly. And here also you can see the different colors and the different qualities mm -hmm. of the stone. So it's quite, and also sapphires you also can find uh, in the same mines like the ruby. So you can also find them in Africa, for example. Now, inclusions is a word that we spoke about before you, uh, with diamonds. And my new favourite wor word with these uh, glitter, glamour, and investment series, the loop, <laughs> if you look at this. Of course. So. But um, rubies and sapphires and precious stones also have inclusions, is, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. And with these inclusions, you can say if they're real ones or not, first of all. But it's also like the passport because they're really very unique. So, also then you can see where the different mines they're coming from. So the inclusions give the hint of the mines and the colored stone should be eye clean. So we, uh, their inclusions are accepted, so it's not a problem. And here you have a nice example, for example, how inclusions could look like, because I really, I think it's marvelous seeing the inclusions like a, a artistic work inside the stone. So I'm really, I love to look with a loop or with a microscope, and then you really see it's a whole another world, which is opening. It's very beautiful. What is perhaps typical of these types of stones that we're looking at? And what can you show us? <laughs> yeah, so uh, as I told, every ruby more than three carat is already very rare. So this you have to know. So sapphires come in much bigger sizes. So to find a sapphire, for example, of uh, 14 carat. So this is a rare Burma sapphire of 14 carat. That's 14. Wow. And so this come a 14 carat ruby is very very difficult to find so that's already a difference this is an excellent color so for example this is a small ceylon one so here there are more inclusions already and you really can see here something some zoning also it's if the color is not everywhere so it's some zoning you call and you can from dark to light then exactly yeah so the color is not everywhere mm -hmm. so it's dark and lighter color and you can also see some typical inclusions for example from Kashmir Kashmir is a very interesting region in fact they only had it in, it's in the mountains of Kashmir as it says mm -hmm. and they only have been exploded for 20 years and only three months a year so if you talk about Kashmir sapphires it's extremely rare just three months a year, that's incredible. Yeah, and just for 20 years. So whenever a Kashmir sapphire is coming up in the market, everybody gets very nervous <laughs> and everybody wants to have it. You want to get your hands on that. You want to get it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for coming in once again and a fantastic insight into our first part of the series. Thank you. And I love to share my passion. <laughs> thank you. Well, that's all for the first part of our Glitter, Glamour and Investment series. We hope that the conundrum of the corundrum has been solved. Click back next time for we'll look at the Bero family and some treatments. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>